Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're having a beautiful Sunday. I'm here with Alexis Stain. Say hi to folks. Hi everybody. <laughs> and Alexis has just opened her solo exhibition, Evergreen. She's Alexis from Art by Alexis Stain and she's got a lovely artwork. And I thought I'd invite you guys to come on in and we do a little tour around the gallery. For some people that maybe couldn't make it, maybe some people that are overseas, we've got lots of family in South Africa, got you know family in Sydney, all sorts of stuff. So this way we can kind of get you, show you Evergreen, show you the solo exhibition. So let's take a tour. Awesome. Yeah, how's that sound? That's great. Um, I'll actually start at the beginning. Yes. So then you can kind of give everyone a preview of how it would look if you did join um, on the over the weekend. So, I've got a beautiful sign over here, just made up, just explaining Evergreen um, and what the exhibition is about. I'll move that forward a little bit. So this is about really jumping into um, a, a whole new world of infinite possibilities. I wanted to create a beautiful series of artworks that were, I guess, a bit surreal, um, a bit fantastical, um, mystical, but also brought out feminine beauty, the divine, like the divine feminine, um, nature, natural elements, and how we relate to nature. So you can see I've got a beautiful bouquet of flowers as well, just to, I guess, show that off a bit more. Um, so yeah, we'll go to this part first. This section was a nice little collection of watercolor illustrations. They're all original illustrations that I had completed just before the exhibition. I think they're good. And yeah, I actually just really love this process because it's totally different to what I usually paint and the mediums that I usually use. But watercolor is just so delicate and beautiful and you get these beautiful tones and layers that I just think are just stunning. Um, the layers of transparency building up to um, more opaque tones like really just um, you can't really find that with any other medium other than watercolor so yeah are we ready to move on to the next section no oh, yeah <laughs> just getting a good shot there <laughs> awesome so we'll move on to this next little piece yeah. so you've got another beautiful watercolor piece and now I found that this has been a really uh, popular piece with everybody. I thought it might be a little controversial to start off with, but yeah, I, I just find that people seem to be really loving that one. It's very different uh, and unique, but I love exploring the themes of the butterflies and the flowers. And it's it's just got a really feminine quality to it, which I, which I loved. And yeah, very, very fun creating that piece. And then as I bring you over this way, we've got a beautiful wall of illustrations. These are all hand-drawn illustrations and they were inspired by the zodiac signs. And I didn't want these pieces to be overly, um, I guess, obvious that there were zodiac signs because, you know, you've got different archetypes, you know, of a woman up here. And, someone might come in here and say oh I'm really drawn to this piece but she might not be a Capricorn necessarily but uh, it's just I guess what resonates with you as a person and what colors you feel most drawn to and these were actually quite it, it was quite a long process to get all of these done I had studied astrology this might sound a bit crazy, but I actually studied astrology specifically so that I could uh, draw these and best highlight the key characteristics that I wanted to bring out in each different artwork for each sign. And yeah, that was just a completely like amazing and interesting thing in itself just to learn about it and really understand the, the depth that, that um, astrology has. So with these artworks, I started by um, hand drawing them. They're all hand drawn. And the originals are just pencil on paper. Um, they don't have any color on them because 
I feel like the minute you add color with pencil, like even if it's watercolors or paints, sometimes it can get a bit smudgy or uh, you might just lose some of the sharper details. So definitely did want to create a, a collection where you draw the pencil drawing first and then you, uh, on another piece of paper, have watercolor. So I put a, the watercolor down on another sheet of paper. And then after that, I actually get um, Kyle, my partner and photographer, to photograph those and we merge the two together in Photoshop on the computer. And this is the outcome of it. You can add the colored background. Um, the watercolor really shines through really nicely and you don't get any smudging, which it might sound like a really long process, but um, it, it's really worth it in the end. You get a really nice result. So if we move on to this wall, we've got some beautiful, um, more cosmic kind of artworks um, and portraits and an abstract as well. You can see a lot of pinks and purple tones. Um, I'm really drawn to, I guess, using a very um, distinctive color palette, as you can see. So yeah, we've got one more in the corner there. <laughs> This one was so fun to do. Like all of these abstracts were really um, fun to do. Just to like let yourself be free, you not know, have to worry about, I guess, refining a spot like to perfection in a way. You can get carried away with trying to do that a lot. Um, but the abstracts were really, really nice. Just to experiment, try different colors, using you know gold leaf tone, um, just in each piece. This one in particular was really um, quite fun to do because you've got a lot going on, but then you've also got these nice textured bits. And up close, I guess when you see it in person, it's a lot nicer, but up close you're able to see the, the different brush strokes and textures coming out through there. Um, and I'll show you with this one as well, it's the same kind of concept. Really wanted to experiment with a palette knife and do something a bit more abstract in the background with the reds um, just swirling in um, almost like Van Gogh, how Van Gogh does it, but didn't want it to be exactly like that, just make it my own. But yeah, using the swirls and creating like a different dreamy atmosphere was, was my main intention with this piece. And this is the final wall we've got. We've got this beautiful piece, which was inspired by springtime. It was when I was moving into my uh, at home that we're in at the moment. Um, last year, we moved at about this time. It's like September, we moved into that home and it was all um, new beginnings. You know, spring was coming out, there were butterflies everywhere and new flowers. So I've, I've kind of tried to draw inspiration from that and this one is called In Bloom specifically to highlight that. You've got a beautiful tiger over here with this um, portrait and this is to pay some homage to the year of the tiger. If you didn't know this year is the year of the tiger and it's it's a great piece just to also bring in a bit of like you know like some animals bring in, you know, how can we incorporate portraits with animals um, and maybe a theme I'll explore in the future as, um, as well. So yeah, I'll let Carl just take you around for the rest of the collection. And thank you for listening to me. Yes. <laughs> I'll be back soon. <laughs> yes, so we've got some people coming in right now, which is Hi. brilliant. And so we've got to get, let the artist go and speak to the good people. And yes, I just wanted to take you around. I probably can't do as good a job of sharing the the, the, the art, but I definitely did see a lot of her work uh, behind the scenes, and really, really incredible. Um, the detail, uh, you know, like 
the bird, like, I mean, you just look at this bird, the colors. Um, and one thing I think I found quite interesting um, with artists is that sometimes, depends on what painting it is, but sometimes you want to actually show the brush stroke. You know, you want to show the, the design, you know, you want to show some of the, the maybe the scratches and the, like the, you know, different sort of lines because that shows the art, you know, the artistic process of you creating that art. So, yeah, you know, these, these, are, these are two phenomenal ones in terms of depth. You know, you've got the waterfall right at the back, um, plenty of depth in the image. So it feels like the image has got layers. You can go back further and further, which is really awesome. Same here. I love this little one. You've got the waterfall right at the back. It's just, I don't know, as photography, it's just a little treat right at the back. You've got like some depth to be able to see into the image. So really, really love that. And then lots of people love these um, lovely landscapes that Lexi does. The tone, she continually changed this one. I think this is inspired by somewhere down south, um, Margaret River, Denmark. Um, so this is you know, a really nice sort of painting that kind of developed over time, you know, where she wanted the clouds, different things like that. And this is another lovely landscape cloud image. Um, and then, yeah, there is Lexi doing her doing her tour so thank you guys I really hope you enjoyed that thank you so much for um, I think I'm giving everyone a wave as Instagram's notified me thank you so much for jumping on in really appreciate you checking out some of Alexis's artworks and um, yeah wishing you a great great Sunday and come on down if you want to come on down to check out the gallery uh, we will be here until 5pm um, it is in Mount um, I'll find the exact address for you but it's right next to this lovely cafe here that has got lovely macaroons so I'll just show you so right next to the Praline Cafe and Patisserie um, so come on down and check out this awesome gallery if you can cheers